Upon the credits rolling, I was struck by many things. One, the powerful story and message that this film quite clearly conveys. Amidst other things were the colour palettes, Barry Jenkins' direction, the list really does go on. But the one thing that stood out, perhaps more than anything else, was the use of music in Moonlight. It's more than just a meandering score or a nonsensical soundtrack. Every orchestral string, every bass crushing beat helps propel the story and give it more levity. The music adds to character emotion and how the audience is supposed to perceive certain situations. I was actually at a Q&A screening in London with Barry Jenkins where he spoke at length about the music used. Most of what I learned that night combined with my own analysis will be the basis of this video. Now you may have noticed that some popular songs in Moonlight sounded a tad strange, almost slurred. That's indebted to the chop and screw style of music. Chopped and screwed music was originated by DJ Screw in the 90s and has since been a mainstay of southern rap. Despite the popular opinion that chopped and screwed music is listened to solely by stoners, Moonlight stands as a way of destroying that notion, the same way it destroys the notion of all drug dealers being horrible human beings with the character of Juan, it does the same with the music. Chopped and screwed music in Moonlight actively slows down the lyrics, allowing the audience to bask in the pain of the words. Sometimes it's easy to just bounce to a beat and let the words slip by, but Barry Jenkins' insistence on this style of music allows the audience to feel the pain presented by the lyrics. These lyrics too often present a candid reflection of Chiron's emotions. In fact, as soon as the credits roll we get a rendition of Boris Gardner's Immediately the track sounds different to the original, by slowing it down emphasis is placed on the unabashed blackness of this film, its celebration of race undoubtedly apparent, it immediately tells the audience that they are about to witness a very intimate portrait of African American life. Yet the lyrics have an even deeper reading, despite being celebratory of black lives it almost feels painful in what it plays during our first encounter of Juan. What this essentially does is makes the audience question if Juan really is a star. Is the casual dope dealer a star? Do you sell drugs? The sad thing is that somewhere along the line they lost themselves to the system. We need only look at Chiron's progression throughout the three acts to understand this since his suppression of homosexuality due to the persecution of society leads to him leading a life of crime. The chopped and screwed music even extends further than just remixes of popular songs though. Nicholas Brittell's outstanding orchestral score is wholly chopped and screwed, especially for the soundtracks of Little, Black and Chiron. Despite being the same person, they are all given different scores. Or are they? If we listen closely to the next three passages, we'll find that somewhere deep in these pieces of music, we can hear a bit of the original score from Little's story. It's beautiful because essentially what the music is telling us is that the world really wants to change this one man. The world wants him to be more masculine or stronger. And by the third act, the world gets that. But inside Chiron's score are those beautiful strings from Little's score. It shows that despite society's expectations of Chiron, there is still a part of him that's bursting to come out and just be himself. You're the only man that's ever touched me. Every time the score changes throughout the three acts, it's almost a reflection of society trying to mould this man into something he is not. 
and every time they attempt to, the score changes. As Sharon is chewed up and coughed out, the song is altered to mimic that. The moment Andre asks him directly who he is and why he has travelled all the way to meet Andre, Sharon immediately turns up the sound of the music in his car. What blares out is a chopped and screwed rendition of Jadena's classic man. While the original, more poppy track seems to be a somewhat obnoxious celebration of oneself and masculinity, the slurred and chopped version highlights one thing. Even in his music, Sharon is trying to put up a front with his masculinity. If the hulking body and physique wasn't enough, his music is trying to almost deter people from thinking of him as what he truly is. Because Sharon isn't a classic man, not by the definition of a toxic masculine society. In fact, his manhood has been questioned his entire life. You ever see the way he walk? What? You watch his damn mouth. <laughs> you gonna tell him why the other boys kick his ass all the time? The blaring of the song not only represents his pain, but also his constant attempt to hide who he truly is. By using these popular songs in such a manner, the film gains this timeless and circular feel which certainly aligns with its three-act structure in a way that makes the music even more powerful. Even in smaller moments, this is reflected aptly. For example, in the first scene between Little and his mother, we hear a quiet rendition of Aretha Franklin's One Step Ahead. We then hear it much louder from the jukebox in the final act. What this does is it adds to a circular and painful narrative. The song represents the pain that Sharon has carried from adolescence all the way through to manhood, a constant reminder of his marginalization. In keeping with that jukebox moment though, the diner scene's entire construction is built around Barbara Lewis's Hello Stranger, a song Kevin says reminds him of Sharon. You played this song. Yet the lyrics, again, upon deeper inspection, seem to speak loudly to Chiron. It almost feels like the stranger is Chiron's real self, the part of him that has been repressed by this masculine front and society's expectations of men. The song is almost an invitation for him to shut down his barrier for the only man whom he has ever done that for. And for Kevin, the song's implications speak of his love for Chiron. Whether the film attempts to keep that ambiguous or not, the lyrics almost explicitly tell us the story, especially since Kevin listening to the song reminded him of Chiron. Within each chopped and screwed lyric, every orchestral string is a piece to the puzzle that is Chiron and the front he has been forced to put up his entire life. By chopping and screwing the entire soundtrack, real pain is reflected on the screen. That rare moment in film where a piece of music and images intertwine to create art is fully realised in Moonlight, which is why it will undeniably go down as one of the modern masterpieces of cinema. And the idea is, you know what, the world is not going to see me anymore. You know, right. I'm going to show the world what I want to be seen of me. Um, you have that initial reaction, and then over the course of the third story, you start to realize you're looking at the same person. And, and, and you're witnessing somebody trying to bury themselves. 